Hello, hello one and all, it's Phil aka Philodoxical and welcome to the video. Today we will be reviewing CZN Burak The Game, a recently released mobile game. Before we get into this review, I would just like to mention that I was offered a key to review the game, which is how I came across it. Although I did receive an array of extra benefits and paid for premium features with said key, I chose not to use them and have based the review on the basic version of the game that most players will be using. I don't want to keep you too long though, so let's jump straight into this. Released in November 2021, CZM Burak The Game is a mobile game based on the famous Turkish chef Burak Estima, who just so happens to be nicknamed CZM Burak. In the game, you play a superhero version of Burak and must use your superhero abilities to fight through a series of dungeons to collect ingredients to create the perfect dishes in your kitchen. Dishes that not only benefit your character and their development throughout the game, but also help feed your adoring masses as they follow you on your adventure. For every unique dish you create, your superhero will be granted a boost of your choosing to help you tackle the dungeons ahead and conquer the game's worlds one by one. CZN Burak The Game is currently available on the Apple Store, Google Store and on the Hawaii App Store too. The game is available in English, Turkish and Arabic. Personally, I was able to get through a world in about 10-15 to 15 minutes when actually playing the game. Unfortunately, there is a lot of filler content thrown into the game such as ads and microtransactions. That makes it feel as if it's a lot longer than it actually is, but we'll get into that shortly. There are currently three worlds in total, with each comprised of four chapters. Each chapter is then broken down into an increasing number of small single rooms or dungeons, if you will. When playing, your goal is to fight through to the end of each chapter and slay the chapter's mini-boss, before finally facing the world boss at the end of chapter 4. As mentioned above, there are currently three worlds for you to play through with a fourth teased as coming soon. The current worlds are Kebabistan, Bulgaria, and Pastania. As you may have guessed, the bosses and worlds all have specific themes. After you have unlocked a new world, you have the option to progress onto it straight away or replay your current world to help earn resources to level up your hero, which offers you a small measure of replayability. To access a world, you need to pay 5 energy to gain entrance to the first room of the first chapter, after which you do not need to use any additional energy unless you die or want to change world. When it comes to the energy, you start off initially with 25 units, meaning you essentially have 5 goes at the game. You can earn 1 energy every 10 minutes automatically for free, or top yourself up by watching the in-game ads or by purchasing energy from the in-game store. There are a series of enemies that you can fight both melee and ranged, that are all food themed from angry spear wielding burgers to ravenous heads of broccoli and weird and wonderful variants of everything in between. To begin with, you receive a shield that can be used as a thrown ranged weapon. As you progress through the game, you can also pick up a kebab skewer and the ability to throw explosive burgers. But these require you to purchase them either using the in-game store or by collecting enough credits by playing through the game. This would be a good time as well though, to mention the game does have a loyalty system where you can earn coins and various other rewards for free by logging in daily. Another benefit to the weapon system worth a mention is that each weapon can be upgraded and more powerful variants of each urn to use on your future playthroughs. Again though, these tie into the various types of currency you accumulate in the game. You can indeed, throughout the game you will get the opportunity to upgrade stats like your health and attack damage, to better help you tackle the enemies that lay ahead. As with the upgrades, you can indeed customise your superhero with a variety of Burak themed skins 
which you can purchase from the in-game store. When playing the game, your character and their attacks react to the use of your smart device's touchscreen. Although, in theory, this means the game is as responsive as you direct it, I found it to be very fiddly on some maps and often not as accurate as I would have liked, almost as if there was a slight lag between input and reaction. Another thing worth noting is that the attacks from your superhero are also automatic, meaning, as shown now, you can stand still and attack enemies, clearing entire rooms with very minimum effort, or just run around in circles and let the game handle your attack patterns for you. Although a nice touch, I found the game was made way too easy with this, and removed most aspects of planning, instead opting for the whole spray and pray approach. When reviewing a game, especially when offered a key, I like to play the game for a few hours to really get in there and pull it apart and look at the pros and cons. Unfortunately, with ZZM Burak's game, I could not really see many pros to speak of bar the soundtrack, and I got bored of the game very quickly. When it comes to the graphics, the game is your bog standard mobile game with bright attractive maps, but the maps and their assets are used time and time again. There was no real variation apart from the odd trap thrown in or a wall splitting the map into sections. The same can be said about the enemies too, that are just your basic run of the mill cannon fodder with forgettable designs. Although you can get different colour variants of enemies with varying attack patterns, they are either not around long enough to admire or are so unbalanced they can kill you in a single shot. This became very noticeable the further you got into the game, which, although some may call a learning curve, was again very sharp, sudden, and may frustrate or alienate quite a few players. Although there is a small amount of tactics required for some maps, especially when there are enemies, overall, there was just no challenge that grabbed me and made me want to pay attention. It just felt as if I was killing, moving, killing, exiting a level, and then rinsing and repeating. Whilst playing the game, the first thing that hit me was just how ad-heavy the free-to-play version was. With you being able to regain your health and access specific recipes, if you sat and watched adverts on the in-game screen. Although the adverts ranged from a few seconds to a minute or so, they would appear every other dungeon, and for everything as I mentioned, from healing to accessing temporary upgrades, and even buying enough energy to allow you to keep playing. As the difficulty of each world increases, the ads become more readily available and go more from being optional to mandatory, as if if you wanted to heal enough to continue to play the game, you had to watch them, as opposed to the tiny amounts of health you received from the free option or the abilities. If you choose not to watch the ads, you are also repeatedly prompted to purchase upgrades and items from the in-game store too which just got repetitive and tiresome, as the whole game started to come across as one massive cash grab, masquerading as a vanity project. I wholeheartedly understand that this is undoubtedly a game made for the fans and meant to be fun and enjoyable for them, but as an example of what I like to call the cash grab, the Chef Burak skin is on sale at the moment for £8.99, which works out to be about $12. That's the same price as you would pay for a skin in Apex Legends or Halo Infinite. When not on offer though, this skin is £17. £17, which is $23. To me, that screams of preying on the fans' loyalty and just pure greed. I have included a screenshot to show what I mean, and although one price is overlaid on the other, you can clearly make out the majority of the one below. As mentioned above, the more I played the game, the more the cons began to stack up and the pros became fewer and fewer. That being said though, I will admit it has a really mellow and easy to listen to soundtrack that is really nice just to have going and playing in the background. At present, the game is free to install and play, but unless you are willing to sit and watch ads after every other room or splash out in the in-game store, it offers very little actual content to get your teeth into. 
the game, although boasting of you being able to defeat never seen before enemies and battle through dozens of levels, really does skip over the fact a lot of it is blatantly a copy and paste job. I personally found the game because of this to get very dull very early on due to its pure lack of variety. Although admittedly, especially on the Apple Store, the game does have a few high marks like 4.8 out of 5 stars for its reviews, I would encourage you to look more closely at just how similar those positive reviews are in their wording and their format before deciding whether or not to give it a go yourself. On a note of the reviews, what really made me laugh was when the developers reacted to criticism on the app stores, their most common reply was, oh well you can do X but you need to watch an ad. This was just further driving home the profit over content or user experience that is so prominent throughout the game and it is such a shame. If you are a Chef Burak fan though, you may still play the game and you may think it is fantastic, but there are definitely a lot more interactive and entertaining free games out there for you to try that are far more enjoyable for less of a pay to play type build as this one is. At the end of the day, all I can really do is provide my personal point of view and encourage you to try the game for yourself to form your own opinions. Some may love it, whilst others might not. But now though, whatever you decide to play, I wish you happy gaming and have a fantastic day.